Perfect. Thank you very much. Good to see everybody. Uh, welcome to this two-week cycles uh, social coding sync. Uh, I'm Bowen, uh, and I'm hoping that we can go around the room basically just saying, hey, uh, I'm so-and-so, and what it is that you're working on, if anything, or if you're in joining a project. So I'm going to toss this over to Yaler, since you were the first one here. Hey, guys. I'm uh, sorry. I was just talking to one of the members in the channel. Uh, if, just really quickly, if anybody's having trouble with their mic, um, if you don't see it circled, it should have it should not have a line through it. So click it on and off, see if it works. If it doesn't work, just reload the page. Um, hi, my name is Yaler. I am a supporter of social coding and a member of Giveth. And I'm working on a bunch of different things as well as trying to make sure we all are synced up here and everyone has resources and stays in touch with each other. Um, I work with the Dapnode project and I work with the grant support campaign to help open source projects find funding, contributors, and um, yeah, resources in general. I'm happy to see you all here. I'm happy to hear it. Um, we're gonna have some interesting topics discussed today as well. So I will pass it to Adam because I see him there first. Hi, I'm Adam. I work on Bright ID, which is a great project that provides unique, provable identities for anyone who wants one. It's an identity network. It's the first of its kind. It's we're we're launching the beta very soon, uh, like within the next couple of weeks. So we'll keep everyone updated on that, so that you guys can come try it out, help us squash some bugs, and yeah, it's been great. It's uh, we, we sort of evolved from uh, a social coding project and now we're working as an Aragon Nest project and it's been a lot of fun and I can't wait to see what happens when we unleash it to real people. So exciting things are coming and I'll pass it on to um, Kay. Hey guys, uh, yeah, so I'm working on communication for Giveth in general. And um, so in that sense, I'm interested in seeing what social coding is up to. I've been working with Kai on updating the main website. So if you now go to giveth.io, you might have to refresh. You see uh, you see the update. There is still some, um, some things that we're working on, but if you see anything special uh, that doesn't make sense or whatever, just let me know. Uh, also working on updating the wiki, um, and for the wiki, we're also creating a, a dedicated space for social coding where you can play around uh, as much as you want. And yeah, so tweeting social, um, yeah, just social in general, whatever you want tweeted out, just let me know. And I give it to uh, Bez, Bezlar. If that person is now blocked, stuck. Um, I think they might be having trouble with their mic. Maybe Ryan then. Uh, hold on, if I can unmute him. They aren't. They they are switching their mute on and off. Um, but uh, I don't think that they're able to speak out for some reason. You may want to try uh, disconnecting and reconnecting. Yeah, we'll but come in back. The meantime, we'll yeah, come back yeah. at the end of checkout. Just try to disconnect and reconnect. Yeah, in the meantime, okay. Ryan. Yeah, uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm I'm at Colony, and I'm not working on any social coding specific projects at the moment. But just interested in see what everyone's building. Uh, and definitely, uh, social coding is kind of a space that I would really like to be more involved in. So just seeing, looking for opportunities and seeing what's around. 
Well, excellent. You have definitely come to the right place. Uh, just to let you know, there have been there were a few people that uh, checked in uh, on the social coding roll roll call sheet that has that that, that are not actually here in the meeting. Um, oh, have you gotten your uh, mic situation uh, fixed there? Yeah, uh, we we actually still can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. See if like there's an issue with your mic, your computer's mic, or maybe you can use a headphone jack if possible. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. there we go. You got there it. Go. Uh, it was the uh, laptop's keyboard. I didn't enable the microphone. But I'm sorry about this. <laughs> no, so, uh, hey, everyone. So know. yeah, finally I can. Yeah, send my messages throughout the world. Uh, so I'm Paul Slor, and uh, this is Abraham sitting next to me. Uh, he's the coder, I'm the speaker. So uh, I work for uh, communications of uh, our uh, jobs, and then uh, Abraham uh, does all the coding and, of course, all thinking here. Uh, we uh, currently uh, work with Adam, uh, which I'm happy to meet. Uh, face to face for the first time. Sure, yeah. And then uh, in Bright ID, which is, uh, I, I think is a great work. It's gonna make uh, really significant changes for the future. Uh, we're also uh, trying to start a, a campus on a project called uh, Etherbank, uh, which I'm, I want to talk about in uh, the good time. If you uh, can pass me some like three minutes, four minutes, I can. Uh, I want to use the time to explain the project, and then uh, it's happy to see you, uh, uh, Gaylor, and then Chris. Uh, it's it's nice to see you in person, and then of course Bowen. It's good to see you as well. Always good to see faces. Thank you. So uh, we have a, a few different uh, projects that are present here, and actually, it's cool that you guys. Uh, showed up and identified yourself because I was going to mention that you were doing Etherbank anyway. Um, so everybody ha is here except for Awesome, uh, who is working, uh, was one of the block turnship people who was working on Deep Deepank or the Decentralized Pancreas Project. Um, and uh, th they may be looking to continue working on their project. Um, but for now, let's talk to the people who are here. Um, and why not? We can start with you guys, uh, Kozlar. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about Etherbank? Sure, I do. Uh, it's a postlar, by the way. It's pronounced C. And I'm sensitive about it. So uh, the, the Etherbank, uh, we can view Etherbank uh, by, by two sides, like it, it has a, a flip side of the coin. Uh, currently, we want to focus on the, uh, the, the loaning system of Etherbank. Just view it as a, uh, as a system that provides uh, loans for Ether holders. Uh, the significance uh, uh, from other projects is that, uh, first of all, it, it has no interest whatsoever. It doesn't ask for any interest if you uh, pay back your loan, uh, which is uh, in no due time. So there's no due time for our loans in, uh, in our project. Uh, secondly, uh, there are no fees. There, there, there is nothing to be asked for. So uh, first of all, uh, no interest, zero interest banking. Uh, secondly, uh, no fees, like Maker is asking for 2.5% uh, interest to provide loans to uh, Ether holders. Uh, but at the uh, same time, you can uh, view Etherbank as a stable coin uh, system, uh, which are the loans. The loans that uh, are provided by uh, Etherbank are uh, literally stable coins because they, they're, they're going to have a, a, a fixed peg to a dollar from uh, 2014 and there's a point there because uh, the, the, that's the year that uh, Ethereum started, uh, which is like, a, a, it is meaningful to us. Uh, we're gonna pick uh, Ether dollars to uh, the, uh, the dollar price in 2014, not the uh, dollar price throughout the year, because dollar has a 2% in, uh, inflation. inflation, but we're not gonna have any uh, inflation whatsoever. 
uh, we came to give us and we want to create the campaign and give us uh, first of all because of the, uh, the com uh, community around give us because uh, like uh, the ether bank uh, is going to provide loans uh, for ether holders so it's going to be uh, significant for uh, the ethereum uh, community and then we found uh, give us as a, a really well known uh, community on uh, ethereum so uh, we wanted to uh, make contact to all those people working on Ethereum, want to improve uh, Ethereum, uh, working on projects on Ethereum. So uh, we wanted to create the campaign and currently we are uh, working on details of the campaign and uh, the, like designing the roadmap and the milestones. Uh, Danny, Danny Bell is uh, helping us actually for the campaign and the milestone. So first of all, the uh, community and the context that we make is uh, of most importance to us. Secondly, we are searching for uh, the like uh, coders and programmers who are interested in monetary systems and uh, the the, uh, the project in general. So, if there are anyone interested in uh, contributing uh, contributing to uh, EtherBank, we will be really glad to uh, have them joining the uh, the project. And the thirdly, uh, which is the last, but the, not the least important part, is uh, the funding part of the project, uh, which I think uh, give us is the best place uh, for people to uh, get introduced to the project and know what we're going to do, which I think is going to be uh, really significant. Uh, we're going to uh, let people uh, believe that there actually uh, can be a real uh, loaning system without asking for any interest, without uh, asking for any fees. It's like free money that people can have uh, if they have any ether that they can lock in in a smart contract. And then uh, the, the Abraham here is focusing on making it as simple as it can be. Like in uh, 30, 330, how many lines of codes? That, uh, he, uh, he claims that he can uh, do the project in like 300 lines of codes, not so uh, complex, like Maker does. Like you don't understand Maker, it, they make it too complex for the early users uh, to be able to use it. But EtherBank is going to be really simple. You put in Ether, you. Uh, uh, withdraw your ether dollars uh, and I think it's going to be really really uh, important for ethereum community because it's going to provide really more demand for ether uh, and uh, ethereum is going to improve if there is a uh, the money defined in there uh, so we can use uh, the ether as the gold as the asset uh, for the collateral, and then we're going to provide the money, the stable money that can be used as a currency throughout the uh, community of uh, Ethereum. So that's uh, the Ether Bank. And then remember that uh, at the same time of being a loan, it can be a stable coin too. So we're providing a loaning system that produces uh, stable coins as loans. So that's what we're going to do. And then uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, we can introduce you to all our documentations. Our proof of concept is ready. Uh, the, uh, the initial codes are ready. Uh, we are starting the uh, initial stages. And then uh, we are happy to present it to you any time that uh, you are interested or you have anyone uh, you know that might be interested in the project. Uh, we will be thankful if you introduce us to them. Well, excellent. That's so, great introduction. I think <laughs> if uh, I wanted to introduce, uh, introduce it, I couldn't uh, introduce um, the platform such well. Yeah, hence my job. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. All right. Well, thanks for that uh, that uh, little presentation. Um, moving on to the next one, Ryan. Do you want to say a few words about Colony? Uh, yeah, I mean, Colony is not specific to the uh, social coding project at the moment. We're just uh, looking for ways to um, work with other projects and see what other people are building and if there's possible use cases there. Uh, I'm just kind of here to, to listen in. But uh, Colony is essentially building a platform for open organizations, and uh, we're releasing our DAP and launching our mainnet uh, next month, this, this month. <laughs> it's weird saying that now. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm developer relations over at 
the colony. So my my main job is kind of trying to figure out integration opportunities and any any projects that want to build with Colony and maybe not use it uh, use the network in the traditional way. Um, we're looking for opportunities like that, or if they want to use it to build out grants programs or um, just just really anything. So I'm I'm here to absorb information more than to provide it. I think tonight. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> well, it's, I'm glad that you're here, um, Adam. Uh, perhaps you might uh, want to introduce a little bit of Bright ID at us. Yeah, sure, I can do that. So um, I, I, I mean, we're, we're kind of nearing the, the end of getting uh, to beta launch. So um, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of progress over the last year, but um, maybe I can just talk about like what our goals are, what our aims are for for the beta launch, and also for just Bright ID in general. Sure. So, um, so we started Bright ID, um, like I said, about a year ago. With it, at the beginning, it was just me, but um, the idea was that there were all these cool projects that I saw, especially in the um, crypto universal basic income space that ha that were missing this piece and the piece was how do you how do you know that the users in your system are only only have one account each that they're only represented once within your system and that's a that's a difficult problem to solve and there's been all sorts of different types of solutions that were uh that people were trying but none of them seemed very satisfactory to me so so i started looking into how to how to improve that and came up with um, or found a lot of interesting research on social graph analysis and then I, I started thinking well okay um, we couldn't just yeah, we couldn't just use Facebook or Twitter or something like that uh, you can't just import an existing social graph there's there's limitations um, because people in those graphs already it's commonplace to have more than one account and it would be difficult to sort that out. So uh, what would happen if we were able to build a new social graph from the from the ground up that had the sole purpose of you being able to prove yourself as a unique person? So think of a social security number right now if you're if you're familiar with the US system. That's that's a way that that's something that uniquely identifies you, but it comes with all this this baggage attached to it, um, you, it's it's created by the government and it's verified by the government, and you have to trust the government at all these different points to make that work. And so the thinking with Bright ID is you you have an identification number basically that is created by you and verified by your social contacts. And so this and and it's anonymous in that there's. First of all, there's no central, there's no central um, entity or something that's that that can look at your data. And there is no, there is actually no data. The only data that the nodes, the decentralized nodes in Bright ID even look at, is the the structure of the graph. That's all they need to be able to um, differentiate you as as a real unique person in the graph from someone who has duplicate accounts or fake accounts all they need is the graph and so it's just it's a graph of public keys basically that's analyzed by our system and um actually abram who who was just talking what was the one that uh that was found our current algorithm that we're using that does a really good job of doing that differentiation so he's been working on it doing a great job and yeah, and so we have this this mobile app. You 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 use the mobile app to make a few connections. It's not it doesn't it's not nearly as involved as something like Twitter or or Facebook. You can ideally get everything you need done within you know a, a short period of time. Just connect to a few people. There's also something called a group that you have to join or create. It'll the, the app should make that e really easy for you to do. And so with just a few steps of just verifying yourself with some people that you already know, then you become verified and you receive a score that lets applications know 
that within within the greater realm of humanity, but also within the, the subset that they're looking at, which is their application, you are a unique person. You're not, you're only gonna be once, exist once in their system. So you can think of, uh, I won't go into detail of all the different applications that this could have, but you can, you can imagine some of the different applications. And like I said, the first one that we thought about was universal basic income. How do you make sure that everyone receives their, their personal share of, of universal basic income and that we don't have to worry about someone receiving it a thousand times, creating fake accounts, things like that. So, so that's, that's bright ID in a nutshell. And with, for the beta launch, what I really want to achieve there is I want, um, I'm hoping that people will try it and give us feedback saying, um, things like this, this part was broken. This was, it was, this part was too hard to use. I didn't, or I didn't understand this part because the, the goal is to make it very simple so that anyone can do this. It should be, it should be simpler. It should be much simpler than getting a social security number. For instance, it should be a very simple process to get a bright ID score. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the goal for, for uh, beta and it's just it's going to be a small set of people uh, I think once we reach a thousand users we'll we'll be at, at the point where we're ready to leave beta so it's just going to be a small group of people that are just want just want to test it even though there's not going to be anything you can really use it for at the beginning um, we're going to start right away uh, making integrations there's a whole bunch of other projects that are online uh, uh, on deck wanting to do things like uh, um, hook it into their universal basic income payment system. Aragon, of course, um, Abram built an Aragon integration. Um, they're one of our uh, main sponsors and, and they really wanted that built. So we're, we're gonna start immediately after beta launch and actually we've already started doing these integrations. Um, so the beta users aren't gonna necessarily ex expect to be able to use all these cool integrations those might not be ready to go but at least the basic system of of receiving a score making connections joining a group all the basics are the things that we're hoping that the beta users will test give us feedback on so that we can then go to the next step the next level which is to get it out to the the wider public and be able to say look here's these you can you can integrate with this you can start receiving coins from this faucet you can start uh, voting on this voting platform, you can start using it for this and, and just show all the different things you can use Bright ID for. So I hope that makes sense what our what our plan is for the next uh, the beta launch should start in a couple of weeks. And and then after that, I think the bigger launch, I would like to have that start in, in the first quarter of 2019. So uh, yeah, exciting times. That's where we're at. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, uh... I think it's Yaler who's also writing in the, in the uh, notes. Yeah. <laughs> Says that maybe the really current DAC would be a good candidate for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if you guys can... know much about the Unicorn DAC, but I, I probably don't know enough either. But uh, it's an interesting system where 150 is basically allocated to every member of the community guaranteed. And then they get to dish the rest of uh, funds out to other people for the work they do. But for the uh, guaranteed 150, it could be an interesting thing to utilize Bright ID to say like you're one person within the system uh, uniquely identified by the members, other members of the system. I don't know if it would work, but yeah. it could be an interesting use case. We, we are going to be doing it under a Aragon DAO. So. Well, then that's perfect because you'll be able to use Bright ID with Aragon then. Um, it's your choice. It'll, it'll be available as an Aragon app and actually uh there'll be a, a little mini in integration with the aragon id app that's coming out um or also early 2019 so yeah perfect excellent um moving right along uh yaler did you uh want to say a few words about dap node where you guys are at yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be happy to bring people up to speed. Um, for those of you who don't know, Dapnode um, has been a project that's uh, been going for like a little over eight months, and we are basically working on smoothing development process for um, Dap developers, creating a decentralized access to the truly decentralized web um, with 
our own version of uh, Dockerized dApps. So dApps can be deployed through dApp node to have censorship resistance uh, and privacy. And you're also able to share access with your friends and family to dApp node by sharing a QR code okay. or a link. Um, we were at all the recent conferences, uh, Web3 Summit, Status Hackathon, and DevCon. We got a great um, kind of feedback from the community about the, the project, the status, uh, lots of interest from other dApps who want to integrate, who want to onboard. So we're working on developing a strategy now for onboarding those projects, uh, kind of making sure that uh, philosophically the projects that we're talking to are aligned with us, kind of in the mission of decentralization, respecting users' privacy and stuff like this. Uh, so we are moving right along. We got a couple grants from the Ethereum Foundation, um, ETH Prize, and Aragon as well. So we're working with those teams. Um, it's been super awesome to have the support of the community. We are, um, it's live right now. You guys can uh, deploy your own DAP node. The software, everything's open source. Um, all of our software is always free, always will be. And we are now partnering with hardware manufacturers so they can ship uh, preloaded DAP node boxes um, anywhere in the world, hopefully anywhere in the world soon. Uh, now we're shipping uh, to a majority of countries, or not, sorry, I should clarify, we're not shipping, the hardware partnership companies are shipping. Uh, DAP node is an association uh, that only exists to sustain the members of the project that are developing the core software. We don't sell anything, um, we won't sell anything. There is a, a cool company from uh, Switzerland called Avado, and they're making the hardware uh, part for us. And we're partnering with them to kind of give them, we give them this, uh, we're, they've created this uh, non-fungible token. One token is, is uh, included with every purchase of a DAP node, which basically says that this is an approved device that's been um, synced and like kind of, a, it's official from our team. Uh, which is something super important when you have uh, data and information that can be changed during the installation process. So uh, that's kind of how we're doing it. That's where we're at. It's been a great project for me. And hopefully for any of you guys who want to install a DAP node, you will um, try it, play with it. That's what I think social coding is all about. People experimenting with other people's projects, uh, finding the tools that work for them. Um, and giving feedback. Uh, I'm super excited and happy to see Bright ID getting ready to go beta. I will be definitely be playing with their application and giving feedback. And um, I hope the same goes both ways. So GitHub DAP node, we're there. DAP node IO, we're also there. If anybody has any questions or wants to start figuring out how to deploy their own DAP node, um, we can answer your questions. That's, uh, that's all. And then I guess I'll give an update about the grants. Uh, the grants campaign we've been working on. Excellent. We have this grant. We have this grant support campaign inside GIF called. Sorry, we have this. We have this campaign inside GIF called grants. Grant support. Um, it started as just like a little side project for Parker Williams, who is uh, one of the social coding contributors. Um, he comes from the nonprofit world. He's been helping to write grants. He's done it with a few of the people in this room, um, and for social coding as well. We went to DevCon, we spoke with the, this is a kind of a foundation alliance called the Funders League. And they are talking about uh, kickstarting projects through uh, collaborative micro loans. So everyone, not micro, but like everyone gives five or six grand or something and they get a project kickstarted and see how it goes, collaborative funding. Um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed to say that I think the prices of crypto have affected um, the willingness of the foundations to invest in small projects like this. So I think we will see a little bit of uh, dormant activity on that front until things bounce back. Um, it seems like a lot of the industry, I want to say, is tightening up around uh, what is success, what are we putting resources and funds into, and um, I hope that they'll come back and they'll revisit this. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to continue to provide one-on-one -on -one grant support as we can, as projects come in. Um, we won't be scaling up to the team we hoped to scale up to, but we will uh, still be there 
uh, helping out part time as much as we can. So that is an update for things on my end. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Yeller. Um, I was trying to write down some of what you were saying as quick as I could. Um, <laughs> if you can help me fill that in. I can fill like it that. in. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Kai, uh, would you be willing to uh, say a word or two about Adrif? <laughs> Okay, so people can hear me in the video. Um, so Adrath is this crazy thing where it's like in the in-between world where we are now, where Swarm is not really integrated with something like uh, ENS or like we're on the fringes of this. Um, there is no easy way for you to operate a microsite from your own Ethereum address. So we made a service to, to do this. Um, and it's called address.space and um, yeah uh, I'll put it in the chat uh, it's like address uh, with an ETH and what you can do is like you can uh, make uh, you, uh, you you can go to your address on your MetaMask and claim a page and then put some text there to uh, Right now, uh, it's focused towards running a donation campaign. So especially for coming up Christmas and uh, the things, I think it's some, something very cool. Um, we have for some, uh, we are getting some outside contributions from um, people at Status, though privately, not uh, like officially Status. Um, it's a very cool project for somebody who just wants to like invest like an afternoon or two into helping with some coding issues uh, there's lots of uh stuff on the issue board it's mostly features uh it's also running quite well we're just waiting for essentially a better block explorer to be uh coming around especially uh uh, Block Scout from POA Network is uh, almost half synced. It takes forever. Um, once that is done, we will announce it to the world. But right now, we're using the open API of Etherscan, and they could like shut us down any time, so we're not advertising it much. But I think it's a pretty cool project, and uh, I would love for more people to get it and play with it. And there is some. Uh, there is some stuff I would really like to do with this and um, yeah, so if anybody's interested uh, I'll be glad to take any contributors and show them what we need Thanks, Bowen You got it um, So does anyone else have anything that they would like to bring up at this point now that we've gone through all of the projects that I know about? Feel free to pipe up I guess I'll make a quick mention. Uh, I, uh, just in terms of what I've been working on this last couple of weeks at Colony was just a starter kit. Um, so if people want to build with Colony, we kind of have two product lines, which I kind of mentioned, or our, our, our team on so previous social code calls kind of already gave a lot of information, so I don't want to go too into detail. But essentially, there's a, a build with Colony product line, which is you can use our JavaScript library to kind of build custom dApps. And so uh, what I built was a starter kit and it's called Colony Starter React. And it's just a, a simple way to kind of load in a project and see how Colony works uh, in the Colony JS library. So uh, that actually just got published yesterday. It's uh, an initial beta. It needs plenty of refactoring and it's, uh, it's, 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 but it's fully functioning and working. So I just make a quick mention of that. Where is that available? Uh, so yeah, I can pop a link in. Uh, it's just uh, the Colony Starter repository um, in GitHub. I'm gonna so, drop it in the notes right now. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Yep. Oh, cool. You got it. <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, I'm 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 the sole developer on it, so I I could definitely use some help while the rest of our dev team is uh, working on getting this DAP launched for mainnet uh, this month. So. If there's any contributors that want to help out in some open source projects, Colony Starter is welcome to the collaboration. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. And Chris, you uh, you had your hand raised? Yeah, I just wanted to add the thing I also put in the comments when uh, Yeller was talking about the, the unicorn DAC. 
I think actually social coding is is the perfect initiative um, for getting well specific projects funded. So because the 450 that we each get each week to um, fund specific milestones. So if for example with EtherBank, if you if you describe the project and then you create milestones for it, this is like the perfect thing that we can fund. Um, so. It, I think it's a great moment for social coding to to start getting new projects in again, and we will we we have this 450 every week that we have to spend on something if there are good initiatives that are that make sense in the Give It Galaxy. So um, I would say just start making milestones and projects and so on so that we can fund them. Yeah, and that'll, um, that'll... maybe you could like. Go ahead, Mueller. I was gonna say maybe you can go in a little more detail for the people who aren't familiar, like just a brief overview of like Unicorn DAC and the people that are in it and this sure. kind of stuff. I don't know if it's important for people. Sure, I can do that. Um, I'll also put um, the link to the Medium post uh, in the in the comments in a bit. Um, so what happens is that so for the moment we're onboarding people. So this is a little bit you could say some of the people in the core team of Giveth who will become like official unicorns. Um, and and they they go through a number of steps. And then as you already, you already said, you get a 150 that you can give to yourself, but the 450 that you get weekly, you can assign to specific milestones that you believe that contribute to like doing blockchain for good, what we want to do with Giveit. Um, and so if you don't assign the 450, then, then it just goes back into the bucket, and you can like use it the week after, if I understand it correctly. But we're still just starting, and it's an experiment, uh, so we're going to see um, how well it works. But it's definitely a way to like stimulate people like you guys to build and and support these initiatives. So um, if they're up there, um, and I think by the way, yeah, how it's going to start. Uh, but do interrupt me if it doesn't. If it's not true, maybe you know, Kai. It, there's there's a sheet where we can list all the milestones that will actually be um, that we could possibly fund. But I'll put a link uh, to the medium post where all the links are. Right. Yep. Um, but from what I understand, it is it is uh, on the slate to be worked on between uh, the DAP team and Aragon, if I recall the last thing I heard about that. Um, so it isn't it isn't a hundred percent active yet, but we're working very quickly to get uh, the unicorn DAC off the ground. And uh, as a matter of fact, somebody here is is having an onboarding meeting in a couple hours. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so indeed, <laughs> we need like a minimum of unicorns to actually be able to to fund the milestone. So with me included, we will now be so Griff, Kai, Bowen, I think, and me. Or Bowen, you still have to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I go after you, I think. Perfect. Um, well, excellent. Um, so, uh, uh, Yaler, you had your hand up there for a second? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. It's So it's 150, so it's 600 total, 150 goes to you, and a 450 is for delegation, yeah? Yep, Essentially, correct. Um, you can take up to 150 for yourself, and you can give up to 400 away to others. Uh, and what doesn't uh, what doesn't get given away goes back into the kitty for the next round. Oh, so if you just give yourself fifty, hundred will go back, and if um, you just or, give or out, or you can take that, uh, you can you can give out up to the rest of the six hundred. But you can take up to one hundred and fifty of the six hundred yourself. Oh, okay, but you can give out more than four fifty. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it is my understanding. Yeah, I was just rechecking in the in the document. It's like. So people can fund up to 150 to themselves. So 450 will be used to decide on other people's initiatives. Um, but you could use the 600 for other projects if you would want to. So yeah, there's just 600. what is the what is the what is the like um, requirements for milestones or campaigns that 
would like to be considered for being part of funding that? Does that make uh, sense? That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna be seeing two of the major players in this in about an hour. Um, so <laughs> I will be sure to ask that question and bring it up because I'm, I, I'm not even really sure yeah uh, exactly how that how that works all i know is that um the the unicorns of the unicorn dac i believe are the ones that are making the milestones for it um so i the think the unicorns of the unicorn dac are the ones that are making the milestones to be to be funded. paid out by the other unicorns yes yeah um, and oh so you have to be you have to be a unicorn to receive payouts no. No, you don't. No, no. It's it's just no. you can make milestones for other people the same way that like Lindsay was making all of the reward Dow milestones. So this is kind of like oh. reward Dow, but like another level higher, if that makes any sense. So it's it's kind of like uh, like uh, eventually, hopefully, will be a way that the 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 entire organization can be governed. Um, mm -hmm. It's more of a governance experiment, but um, actual money is being put put behind it to see how, how it works out and and uh in doing so this is like showing the vote with your money scenario to see how it works yeah okay to, to clarify why uh it's the unicorn dac that has to create these milestones it's just that for the moment in the depth uh so it's the unicorn dac is a new new community but we cannot fund from one community to another so the unicorn dac cannot fo fund social coding milestones but that does doesn't mean anything. Even if you put them up on social coding, we can duplicate them and create them in the Unicorn DAC and fund them there. Uh, so that that's that's the reason uh, so that, why. That's that's the reason why. Oops, up Oops. Micro. Oops. That's not you. That was uh, there was somebody that just connected. Who I'm muting for now, but I will ask <laughs> you who you are. Yeah, and uh, and the other point that uh, to respond to Yeller, like how how is decided which milestones could be funded. Uh, there are some explanations given in the medium post that I um, that I linked here, um, but the big thing is always like, do we feel it 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 is positive for the for the blockchain community? Is it blockchain for good? And I think everything that social coding is doing is so. I think all everything you do is is uh, could be up for funding. So um, yeah, but as 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 we said, it's we're just starting it. Um, so first we need some unicorns to actually be able to, to give out the funds. Well, excellent. Um, okay. Now I don't know if anyone else has anything that they would like to add at this point. Um, if you do, uh, feel I was going to say, if there's a new person that wanted to talk about, um, something, we should let them go. Otherwise I can uh, post, yeah, post sure. another thing I wanted to. Yeah. Um, the person that just connected, I did have to mute you because your microphone was really loud. But uh, if you're able to <laughs> unmute that um, and you would like to introduce yourself. Um, otherwise, I'm going to let Yaler continue. Going once, twice. Okay, if you aren't able to unmute yourself, you might want to disconnect and reconnect. But uh, Yaler, do you want to go in the meantime? Yeah, if you're having some trouble, just uh, post in the comments and we'll try and help you sort through that. Um, so yeah, I wanted to announce uh, on behalf of Storm City, which is another amazing project, uh, Decentralized Commerce, they're live. Um, Storm City is running on a bridge right now to uh, COVID, but they are using real tokens. Um, they're doing a Latin American tour right now with a few, um, well, they just finished, I guess, with a few members of Giveth. Uh, Griff was there, um, Dether was there, Status was there, and they had a great reception from the communities there, people doing transactions, posting uh, requests, and uh, I'm super excited about this. These guys have worked really hard, um, even after all the awful things that happened with the hack. Uh, to keep things moving and they've made amazing strides. The app is amazing. It works really well um, Obviously lots of upgrades and lots of features to be added But the baseline of what they built is working and I would be stoked for you guys to go in there um, And play with it set it up. Uh, I know they're happy to uh, Send you some SWAT which is real SWAT to start playing with it and experimenting I would also be happy to send you some SWAT as I've been given uh, some funds to help uh, kickstart people's journey into centralized commerce. 
Um, so yeah, I'll post it in the notes and I'll post the live link in the channel. It's basically just uh, swarm.city. Put up a request and start playing with it. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, oh, Chris again. <laughs> yeah, I had a question actually Yiller, about Swarm City. They were supposed to like go live with their new version when um, when their season was done, but it, did they go live earlier? Because as as you say, it, it's been at, uh, active in Latin America. I was a bit confused by that one. Yeah, the way that it, it, it from my understanding, the way that it had to be done, um, they had to open up the live link to start to to make the bridge active, um, and it's kind of like their their live link was their test environment. So now they're maintaining their test environment and their live link. Um, they didn't announce it officially because they didn't want to make a big hullabaloo about it. But yeah, they had to push their schedule ahead a little bit and go ahead and um, launch the live link. So yeah, they just jumped, jumped ahead. Okay, I got it. Excellent. Um, anyone else? Uh, if not, um, I'm going to suggest that we uh, we all check out at this point. Um, and I wanted to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I will make a post and put it up in channel uh, so that everybody can see the notes from the meeting and we can hopefully start to get people connected with each other. Um, so uh, if we want to start checking out, I will, I'll hand this over to, to Chris to start the checkout process. Yeah, it was a really nice meeting and nice to see some new people as well. And looking forward to the next one. And I hope we'll be able to fund some of the projects you're working on very, very soon. And I give it to Adam. All right, thanks. Yeah, likewise, great projects. Uh, you guys are awesome for working on what you work on, and I'm I'm very happy to hear the progress that I'm hearing. So, uh, all right, see you guys. I'll pass it to uh, let's see, Paslar and Abram. I don't know if they're there, so I'll pass it to Ryan. Yeah, uh, likewise, once again, uh, really cool to just hear what you guys are working on and. Uh, Sometimes it's always head down and work in what you're working, so it's always nice to lift your head up and see what other people are up to. So uh, yeah, really enjoyed listening and uh, looking forward to more meetings. I'll pass it to, uh, let's see who we got, Yala. Uh, yeah, thanks guys. This is uh, awesome. It's been, and it's been nice um, to kind of catch up, resync with everyone, see where people are at, new projects and existing projects. It's great to see that some of the projects that have been in this community for a long time are really like they're all they're they're graduated you know like they're getting so close to being live and and getting some supporters um getting the attention they deserve so great work on your guys's behalf um i also want to just remind everyone that um we have this reward dial function now that is existing um and it is not an exclusive thing where it's uh anybody Specifically, we encourage everyone to dish points. So if you're working on Etherbank or you're working on something you consider a social coding project, dish points to other people, dish points to your uh, fellow contributors. And then uh, when we do our voting, we'll get a valuation and they will turn into a nice little bonus, Ether bonus at some point in time. Um, so yeah, remember that. And we want to see that kind of play out. More people take ownership of the reward dust system. Thanks for being here. Uh, I pick boo boo. Kai, the baby daddy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much for doing that, Kai. Um, Is Pasolar there? Is Pasolar there? Uh, I think so. I should be. Am I? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's nice. I wanted to thank everyone, uh, especially your final joke, Kai, that uh, you made about uh, Etherbank being too good to be true. We wrote a, an article about, have you read that or did you just come up with that joke? 
<laughs> Seriously, there no. is an article that we wrote on media that the title is that. Uh, I will share you the code right now. The title is either uh, like uh, zero uh, interest loans are too good to be true, or are they? That's the title of the article that we wrote. <laughs> the first question that came up when uh, people faced our project. And then there you go. So uh, thank you guys for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, introduce ourselves to you. It's really great working with Adam, with Yaler. They are always helpful uh, to us. And then I want to thank everyone else for their uh, time that they took to uh, hear us and listen to us. And if uh, anyone is interested uh, to know more about Etherbank or do you, if you know anyone else who might be interested, Please let us know and uh, thank you, thank you, and the 100th time, thank you. Well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I know the rest of us do as well. Um, and uh, we look forward to working together, like, uh, and, you know, keep keep track on the social coding channel. And um, I guess with that, we'll, we'll uh, bring the meeting to a close. Um, and it was great to see everybody. Paslar, please post the article in Riot so we can put it in the uh, notes. Abram just people. did. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.